Welcome back to What RT Noobs for Channel Disturbance. This is an M53 M55, the Tier 9 American SPG. This one's located on the north spawn of Prokhorovka Encounter and it's under the command of Baseman from Hell. And yes, we are continuing the series of replays featuring the Baseman and this time he's in the Tier 9 American RT. And that's the Tier 8 American RT there, the M40 M43. Well, it looks like Baseman's going to go over onto the east side of the battlefield. Sometimes helps on Prokhorovka Encounter because the cap is actually on this side. Oh, that was quite a big bang as he went over there. And of course there are some nice firing positions over this side of the map as well. Okay, looks like he's headed for that bush. Now, the 8-inch howitzer, it's capable of 1,050 alpha, if it can penetrate 52 millimeters of armor, and it's got a burst radius of 11.1 .1 meters, and that means that it's actually got quite a big footprint if you hit the enemy. Even if you get a near miss, you're going to do a lot of damage. Even a non-penetrating shot is a, well likely to do around about 500 hit points. And there's an object 277 up at the center line, 100% health. Not for long, rounds out. That landed near him. Unfortunately, he was unspotted at the time the shell landed, so we just don't know how much damage that did, but I'm pretty sure that would have done some damage. And that IS-3 is missing most of his hit points, so I think he got hit by our teammates on his way up towards the cap. And he's just sitting inside the border, and I can see some little destruction going on just ahead of him, so yeah, you can see there's a bit of destruction going on there. I think he's still there. Is he still there? Yes, he is. And now he's not. <laughs> now he's back in the garage. First kill of the game goes to the baseman. Oh, and the 277's popped up. And yes, he is missing 15% of his health. So I think that may have been down to baseman. Okay, he's lining up a shot on the Object 277, the Tier 10 Soviet Heavy. The 13 centimeter gun, almost loaded. And we've lost sight of the enemy. I don't know what's happening there. I think he's adjusting his arc there because he got a bit of reticule bloom. May have been accidentally jogged. Okay, up on top of the hill, we've got a Progetto 46. Oh, who just dies from a 60 TP shell. And an E50. Lining up a shot on him. Rounds out. Oh, now that's interesting. The E50 wasn't hit because the shell went right over the top of him and hit somebody who was behind him. And it was a direct hit on whoever was there because there was no explosion. So it looks like the E50 does have company up on top of the hill. And well, there's one of the tanks, but he's 100%. So that's the Lerva. He wasn't the one that was hit by that shell, but somebody was hit by it. And Baseman is just doing a quick check to see who's off the other side. He's lining up a shot on the Lurva. There's the E50 again. He's going to hit that one rather than the Lurva. And he got a direct hit on something. I'm not sure if that was the E50 or the E50 was hit by Splash, but it looks like the shell landed near the E50, but there was no explosion. So I think whoever was directly behind the E50 was hit again. If the E50 was the target and he was the one that was struck, there would have been an explosion because he was in sight at the time. So the fact there wasn't an explosion means it must have been somebody else. And that shell went long. Reverse slope of a hill can be very difficult to get the target sometimes. It does help to go to battle assistance on those occasions. It's a very fine aim on tanks that are actually on a hill, especially on the reverse slope. Over near the center line, we can see the 277 again. E4 behind him. Well, we just lost the 60 TP to their GW Tiger. Rounds out on the 277, lands next to him for 257. Splash. We've got three tanks in the cap at the moment. The T-34's 
try to actively hit the enemy, but unfortunately all he's doing is getting actively hit himself in the process, which is not the best idea. And he's been killed by the 277's 13 centimeter. And there's the tank that was hit twice. It was a Tiger II. He's down to just 62% of his health. Now he's lost some more. Next round's going in. And that hits him for another 471. So that must have been the tank that was hit twice by Baseman Shell. But of course we didn't see the explosions. Well, all three guys we had in the cap have been forced out of the cap or killed. And now that 277 is in the cap, but not for very much longer. He's a splash kill, and it'll only t take one shot near him, and he's dead. Enemy yep, easy for baseman to do that. Just needs to put a shell near the target. He's done most of the work. He's marked the lever as his next target. Almost ready to go. 33.23 seconds is the reload time. Rounds out. This should be hit. It is. 345. Somebody was asking me just recently, is the 8-inch how it's a worth it? Oh, what's he doing here? Calm yourself down, man. <laughs> <laughs> he was just jiggling his rescue all about. Um, is the 8-inch howitzer worth it? Yes, it is. Because even if you get uh, a non-penetrating shot, uh, with the alpha damage being 1,050, you could do, what, 500 hit points of damage per shot. And that's equivalent to a 122mm gun, a tier 9 or tier 10. So yes, it is very much worth it. And yes, there is a long reload time, 33 seconds, but uh, if you get a penetrating shot, it's a massive 1,050, and it is easy to do that on tank destroyers, which have very thin armor, especially the Scorpion G, the SU-130PM, and the Waffentragers, because uh, they really don't like getting hit by a high-velocity shell, an 8-inch shell that can uh, whoop their ass. Or as the Americans say, that's a paddling. Keeps swapping back to the hill again. The Lover's now one shot. He only needs to put a shell near him to splash kill him. Can he get it on target? Rounds out. Fires it in. Yes! And that was actually a direct hit. Oh, we just lost another one. The Pajetto 46. E50 has left the hill. And he's now sitting up near the uh, cap, or near the railway line. According to the minimap, it looks like there's a Wizzy 131 GFT. Or is it Wizzy 111, not 131? It is a Wizzy 111 GFT up on top of the hill. Tier 9 Chinese tank destroyer. That E50 just got uh, a near miss from the M40. They're taking fire from our 703 up on the hill. Oh, the 703 just got wiped out by the E4. And now we've got a Wizzy 111 GFT coming up to the bushes. It looks like he's going to head north. He fires one into the bushes. But he'll now need to get behind that bush himself because otherwise he will be spotted. He's sitting in the open at the moment. The enemy's capping. Now, I suspect that with two tanks, so it must be the E-50 and the T-124. The Wizzy 111 GFT was last seen heading north. We've got our Yag Tiger off to our left. Oh, there's the Wizzy. He's headed towards us, lining up a shot. 
That tracked him for 300. I don't think he saw us. Oh, and the Jag Tiger makes certain of it. Puts him out of the game. That was a near miss from the M40. Our TVP's going up near the cap to try and spot for us. He doesn't want to get too close there because otherwise he might be on the receiving end of a shell. We fire at the E4 and there's a reset. And he's getting stun assist as well. So the TVP just emptied his mag into that uh, E4. It's the E50, so long as we can get a shell near him as well, we might be able to take him out of the game. Our TVP's heading south. I think he's going after the enemy RT. It is an encounter game, so it does take longer to cap, twice as long. And now we've got the Tiger 2 insulting him, telling him he should get near to the cap. And TVP still headed south. I'm pretty sure he's after the enemy RT. He's found him. It's a school bus. And he kills the school bus. Oh no. He's just got taken out by the T110E4. And that means we've lost our spotter on the cap. And Baseman has a few choice words for the Tiger 2 in chat. Now we need the Yag Tiger more than ever to go towards the cap and spot for us. It's three versus three. Baseman's blind shooting into the cap now. And he's indicated to the Yag Tiger. In fact, the others are indicating that the Yag Tiger needs to go in and spot. Find out where the enemies are so we can finish them off. There's no way we can blind fire in to kill because there's no idea where the enemy might be. We need to look for destructions. And if... Uh, by, by the um, enemy, and if the enemy stays absolutely still and doesn't do any damage at all, it'd be difficult to spot where he was. You know, Blaze, base man's just blind firing and he's only got three rounds left now. There's two minutes, 45 seconds left on the clock. The enemy's almost about to cap out. Ten seconds to go. The Yag Tiger needs to get into that cap. He's in the cap. Okay, so that's holding the cap. Oh, there's the E50. Baseman's loaded. Rounds out. Kill shot. And a huge amount of capture points reduced. 97. That means a defender medal for the Baseman. The enemy doesn't have enough time to cap on their own. But there's only two enemies left now. It's just the T110E4 and we just lost our RT. The M40, M43. And that kind of indicates the T110E4 has gone north. Because he found the M40, M43 amongst the bushes. So he must be just over the railway line. Baseman's positioned himself behind the bush to protect from the E4's fire. But E4 must kill Baseman and the Yag Tiger. And the Yag Tiger's headed south, so there's no way the E4 is going to get to him. So that at the very least, it's going to be a draw. But the Yag Tiger can't force a win. He actually should have um, gone up on top of the hill, the Yag Tiger. E4's popped over the railway line at the crossing. He's auto-aimed on. Don't fire. Don't shoot. Don't reveal your position. Oh, I think he's just revealed his position. Yes, he did. Get motoring. Get moving. He's not moving. Enemy RT will shoot any second. That's the GW Tiger. Yep, there's the round. But he needs to get motoring. And he wasn't motoring fast enough. The E4... Oh, that was kind of fatal. And the E4 driver had two marks on his barrel. I just saw that briefly. But the base man is now out of the game. So it's just the Yag Tiger left and there's 27 seconds on the clock. This is definitely going to be a draw. 
I doubt if the GW Tiger is going to be able to get a shot on the Yag Tiger. We don't know where he is anyway. And the E4 is no way he can get to the Yag Tiger. So this clock's just going to run down. And that's going to be the end of the game. So much hard work there by Raceman. Four kills. And there you go. Clock runs out. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats and we'll see how well he did. Well, it was the first class tanker for the base man from hell in the M53, M55. He did get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He did get four. A bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 15. He got a gauze medal for doing more damage than eight times the hit points of his own vehicle. And, of course, he got a defender medal because he reset the cap when there was 97 cap points on the cap. And in fact, actually, I think he probably has some other cap points from other times when he hit enemies in the cap. Cap. His win rate from the game was 8,224, which is super unicum standard, but unfortunately wasn't able to get the uh, the win because, well, his teammates weren't actually very helpful in revealing where the enemy was quickly enough to enable him to do his job. If we look at the team score, we can see that he didn't get the highest damage in the game. That actually went to the TVP 250-51 with 5,637 hit points. He got the high caliber. And he got the second highest damage with 4,735. The Wizzy 111GFT, who came down from the hill, got 3,733. And that T124 got a Pascucci's Tank Sniper and Top Gun for 3,546 hit points. When it came to kills, it was the E4 with six kills. Then it was followed by Base Man with four. Then we've got two tanks, the Ferdinand on our team and the Wizzy 111 GFT on the enemy team with three kills apiece. And when it came to base XP, it was 697 to base man because of his four kills and his resets, 586 to the E4 and 574 to the object 277. He fired 19 rounds, got six direct hits, zero penetration, 20 splash. Damage of 4,735 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. He did receive a hit, it was a penetration, that was from the E4, uh, was very fatal. Seven enemy vehicles damaged, four killed, and 1,012 hit points of stun assist off 16 stuns, and he did get 100 defense points from the cap. On a premium count, he earned 53,670 credits, got 27,851 from holiday ops, and 5,588 from courageous resistance. That's for getting a battle hero medal or an epic medal in a losing or a drawn game so his total 87,109 credits and after repair and ammunition resupply took away 37,854 he picked up 33 bonds from that battle i think that's because the gauze is worth three the um defenders worth three or was it no it's because it was a tier 10 game that they're, they're worth much more and of course he won the probably won the benefit of each year as well for 25 he also got 1,045 XP, 589 for Courageous Resistance, took away 1,635 altogether. He said this is a goodish game. Well, it was a very tense game down to the wire, but I think it was a bit of a mistake for him to fire on the E4. What he should have done, really, realistically, is just sat there, watched the E4, and not fired until the E4 had his back to him. Then you can shoot. <laughs> shoot him in the back as much as you like, and then run for the river and... Stay below the ridge line so that the E4 can't fire at you. That way he would have picked up a few more extra points. But auto aiming on, especially when the enemy was on the move, wasn't going to yield good results. Uh, ideally he would have gone to RT aim and waited until his back was turned. Because it does take a little while for the E4 to turn around. Even though his turret can turn 90 degrees. Uh, if you were to hit him when his back was turned to you then he wouldn't be able to get his gun to bear on you in time before you got into cover. Um, but obviously it was going to be a loss, at, or rather a draw at that time, because we knew already that there was no way that um, th that we could get the win, unless, of course, the Yagtai could find the RT and your shot could accidentally, or Baseman's shot, could accidentally set off an Amorak in the uh, E4, and I don't think that was going to happen. So, uh, yeah... Bit of a heartbreak in the end, but uh, it wasn't a win or uh, uh, that it was just a draw. But at least it wasn't a, a loss. That's the main thing. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel, please. And thank you for watching.